Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate the path store uh, with open API specification. After the generation, we're going to hit uh, start the server and hit the server with the curl command to test the server. Once we finish the testing, uh, we can walk through the source code. Okay, let's begin. First, we need to prepare the environment. Let's create the directory called workspace. We need to check out a couple of projects. First, we need to check out the light code gen. Second, we need to check out the model uh, config. So the live code gen contains code generation uh, for uh, all different type, uh, different framework within the live platform. The model config contains all the specifications. It includes REST, uh, uh, RPC, and uh, GraphQL. So first, let's uh, let's build the live code gen uh, project. I'm going to skip the test cases so that it will be uh, faster. Now we're going to uh, use a command line to generate the source code. Let's go back to the workspace. And let's copy the command line. So the command line, the live code gen is, build, is built on Java. It's basically built on top of the live for, uh, for the framework. So we just call the Java dash jar, live code gen, code gen CLI. <coughs> and we input the framework, it's open API. Output will be uh, live example for G, uh, REST. Let's just change this to pastor under uh, the workspace directory. And the model, con uh, the model config contains specification. So we can use uh, uh, open API YAML. There's the model and the configuration dash C is the configuration. We use the configuration from pastor. So we run this command line. Now we have a test store generated. We can see this. Okay, we have test store just newly generated uh, in test store folder. Go to the test store. And then we can see the entire project here. Let's compile the project and start the server.
Oh, you can see we have zero started. Uh, listening to port eight four four three on the H as the HTTPS server. So let's use curl command to access the server. We use dash k to tell uh, the curl don't ver verify the certificate from the server because the certificate on the server is self signed certificate. HTTPS. Eight four four three slash Okay, as you can see we got some response back. The response actually coming from uh, the specification. Next let's uh, let's walk through the source code. I'm going to open the generate source code in workspace. Okay, as you can see, we have the uh, generate project. There is a Docker folder contains Docker file and a Docker file Red Hat. The Red Hat Docker file basically is, is built based on the Red Hat uh, Red Hat Open GDK. Because uh, there are so many uh, corporate customers, they don't want to use this Alpine GRE, especially when they are deploying to OpenShift uh, environment. Uh, it is required to use Red Hat uh, as a base image. The source code folder contains all the source code, generate the source code. In the main, we have uh, handlers. The handlers uh, basically is generated from the specification. Every endpoint you have handler, and each handler you have uh, some uh, example output is generated from uh, the specification. There is a get request, there is a path store, uh, path ID delete, and there is a uh, uh, get a specific pad based on ID and the post. There is no response for post, so it's just an end exchange. There is a model and the pad model generated here and the arrow uh, generated. If you go to the folder uh, in resource, this, this folder, config folder under resources, contains all the configuration. This handler uh, dot yaml contains all the middleware handler chains. Basically, you can define define a chain in the middleware handlers or multiple chain in the middleware handlers, and for each individual endpoint, you can specify which uh, chain the handler is going to be uh, passed before you reach the business handler. The default one is basically for all the handlers generated from the specification. As you can see, we go through. Exception matrix, traceability, correlation, specification, security, body, audit, sanitizer, and validator. Then we reach the business uh, endpoint. Here you can see this is the path, this is the method, the HTTP method, and you pass the default chain, which is defined here, and then you reach the path, uh, path get handle. This is the post, get, and delete. As you can see, we the code generation inject the house and the service ID is a get uh, method, and we have server info to output the server information regarding to all the configuration and the runtime information. This is the specification for Pastor Open API YAML. It's in the uh, YAML format. You can see all the uh, uh, spike and all the validations against the schemas. Security, how you enable security. And the validator is enabled so that uh, all the requests come into the server will be validated against the specification. Prim primary and the secondary CRT are built in uh, certificates to verify the JW token. Secret contains all the secret information which 
supposed to be encrypted when you go to production. Server key store, server trust store contains certificate and private key on the, for the server. Server YAML is the configuration for the server. Uh, which port number you're going to bond, uh, bond to, and uh, if HTTP enabled, HTTPS enabled, HTTP2 enabled. Now you can see default is port number is for uh, 8443. Enable HTTPS true, enable HTTP2 true. And it specify the key store and the trust store, and if two-way SSR enabled. In the default, we don't use two-way SSR, but we use uh, uh, one-way SSR plus OAuth. Service ID is the unique identifier for the service. Enable registry right now is false. When you go with production, you want to register your service to uh, service discovery and so that a client can find your service, especially when you deploy to a, a cloud environment without a static IP and a, a static port number. Dynamic port number is false right now, but you can enable to add dynamic allocate port number for your service. If you do have a dynamic port number enabled, you can specify the minimum port number and the maximum port number. The build number is to support multiple environment on the same cloud environment. Service uh, YAML is the uh, dependency injection module. So you can define uh, all the interfaces and all the implementation mapping to the interface. Now we don't have any for this uh, very simple test store. The generated test cases here, you can see every every uh, handler, you have test case generated. The test case using HTTP client and start the real server to send the request. It's common out because uh, uh, we don't know how to validate the, the result. So you can uncomment the section and you can change the logic to verify uh, your server. The test server is uh, generate the server so that you can start uh, the real service with all the bells and the vessels uh, for your test cases. This resource folder we contain some configurations. You have client key store, client trust store, so that the test test case can access the service using the right certificate, uh, and the client. YAML to config the client uh, module and server.yaml in order to start the server with another port number so that there won't be a, a conflict with uh, some existing services running on your local. There is a readme generated and there is a, a pub.xml generated. So that's pretty much like all we have. Uh, once you have the application generated, what you can do is you focus on only the test store uh, business logic and all the test cases for those uh, handlers. So once you finish this, all other configurations should be done by the uh, DevOps team. So for developers, you only need to focus on the business implement all the business handlers based on the specification and the requirement. Uh, that's it. Thanks, thanks for watching. And if you like the framework, please go to the uh, GitHub to start the project, Life4J project. Thank you. Bye.